how are you doing with heavy metal? And what do you try to do as a publisher to keep that uh, relevant and uh, in, uh, in the you know, minds of people looking for comic books? Uh, great question, thanks. Um, you know, it's, it's interesting is that when, you know, um, Heavy Metal started now, it's, it, 2012 is Heavy Metal's uh, 35th year as well, and uh, um, one of the things that I think helps Heavy Metal, because, you know, t traditionally anthologies are a tough sell, um, you know, uh, it's hard enough, I think, with the, with the number of titles out there and the audience we're all trying to reach, uh, to find uh, enough people to buy uh, an ongoing title um, on a regular basis to keep it, you know, in print and stuff. So I think when, you know, anthologies, unless you really love them, it's it's short reads, short ideas, and it's a lot of fun. I personally like them, but sometimes it's not enough, you know, um, you know, regular characters to keep keep it going, to keep a regular audience interested in it. Um, I love seeing stuff like Dark Horse Presents and and other other collections like that, the Fantagraphics stuff. Um, Heavy Metal is lucky that it's it's been around so long that we've got a great subscriber base of like 15,000 subscribers um, that um, uh, have a lot of my guys like me that are 50 years old and they've been you know spending 23 bucks a year to get their six issues for you know 35 years um, and they like the format. Um, I think that what helps Heavy Metal too is its um, its staple is um, uh, a European. You know, like you said, uh, a European uh, presence. Um, usually, the long story. I usually do a featured, 48-page uh, featured story. Then it's surrounded by uh, a series of shorter stories and a couple galleries. And the featured story is always a European uh, purchased, um, reprinted item, or some of the fantastic work they're doing there. And then the short stories are a blend of artists from all over the world, from Singapore to the United States and, and other parts of Europe. Um, and uh, Heavy Metal has been, uh, had some success on the newsstand to a certain point, um, but even that's getting crunched pretty bad. Um, you know, you know, you talk about digital versions of Heavy Metal, you can, any one of you can go online today and, and find every single issue, issue of Heavy Metal available on high quality, zoomable, page turnable um, download for free. Um, anything that's printed can, you know, anybody that's got the spare time to do it can scan it and print it and put it out there. Um, so, you know, when I looked at, you know, what's going to be the ongoing direction and the purpose of the magazine, and, and my hope for the magazine is that, you know, we still have strong subscriber sales, we have strong um, direct market sales, um, we do about six or 7,000 copies through Diamond, we have a couple foreign distributors that we sell another, you know, maybe 10,000 copies um, to, and I'll keep the publishing program going. Um, mainly to hardcore audiences that want the printed form, and again, it's mostly you know dinosaurs like me that still want the the issues and 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 put in my little binders and on my shelf and all that. Um, but the digital versions, um, it's something that I'm looking to to you know I've kind of held back um, on doing it. I offer a few books on our website, um, art books and things like that that you can buy in digital uh, format. But I've tried to come up with a way to make it um, an interesting experience for. Um, heavy metal readers, and that be whether it be um, you know uh, a mixture of um, classic content from the early you know um, the, the late seventies, early eighties, mixed with some newer content, new covers, and packaged that you know um, under a, you know an iTunes, i i iPad, some kind of app, uh, and that way um, exclusive content that you can only get um, digitally first, and then if it works that way, um, uh, do it as collections. But it is sort of a a big question mark because I don't know. I mean, you know, I have no interest in reading comics on on uh, my iPad unless I'm trying to lug, you know, 25 comics on a plane to go somewhere. Then I wish I had my comics on an iPad. You know what I mean? So it's sort of um, I don't know what the future of it is. And I, you know, and I ask the same, um, you know, different retailers when, like, say, DC launched the new 52. You know how much of that was um, how uh, how many new fans the new 52 was bringing into comic stores, and most of the comic guys I talked to, comic store owners, have said it was um, mostly people that were reading it already, um, people that read DC and then you know buying it, but it wasn't bringing in lots of younger readers and younger kids. Some of the digital fans are are, are bringing those in, but it's still I think we're sort of in a real interesting transition um, of you know publishing versus digital to see what where it's all going to go. So I think it's going to be up to guys like you and me to figure that out and you know see how it works. Super, super quick follow-up. Hmm? Film? Where's the film? 
Say that again. Where's the Where's the film at the moment? Oh, the heavy metal film. Yep. Um, um, I'm going to leave here and go visit Mr. Robert Rodriguez, um, and uh, we're going to talk about that some more. Um, I don't know if you guys knew San Diego Comic Con last year. Um, Robert and I had reached an agreement um, that Robert's uh, developing. He wants to do a heavy metal animated film. We agreed to all the terms and the concept and uh, not the concept but, and and what we want to do together and I think he's a fantastic filmmaker and um, it'll be animated and we're going to talk about what that's going to be and hopefully make it a proper announcement soon. Excellent.